So good morning everyone. Today we're going to talk about a project called ThorFi. That was also called Thor Financial. Now what this video is going to be about, this video isn't going to be about the project itself. This video is going to be about its history and its price action. The reason why I'm making this video is because I hear a lot, see a lot of people being negative about this protocol and having misguided opinions, rightfully so misguided opinions, but misguided nonetheless and misguided by their emotions and instead of thinking logically about the project and about what happened in the crypto space at the time they they lost a lot of money and people have lost a lot of money with Thorfi and barriers have gone up and people haven't realized what has happened in the situation they've just seen a loss of money and immediately barriers up but when you actually think logically about what happened and about everything in the space at the time and everything that happened it wasn't Thorfi's fault whilst yes there were bad decisions made and blame needs to be given for those bad decisions but those bad decisions didn't cause the price to crash as much as it did the reason why the price crashed as much as it did was because all the mark, all the capital has left crypto. You know, we'll get into the specifics of how much was in the crypto market all time high and how much there is now. But that doesn't tell you the whole story, because that just tells you how much is in the crypto market. DeFi, specifically, has had about a 95% capital loss. That's 95% of all money inside decentralized finance has left from its previous all-time high. How can any project survive such an event? Well, Thorfi has. And secondly, its LP pair, AVAX, fell 90% plus. It's gone from 163 at its all-time high to, I think it fell below 10 at one point. Now, that's an insane loss in price. Now again, how can a project survive that? Well, Thorfi has. Now, yes, it survived by reducing its payout to holders significantly. Well, of course it has. You know, how, how else could it survive? I mean, just the AVAX LP instance, for example. You know, people don't seem people seem to forget quite a lot that Thor's not priced in USD. It's priced in AVAX. So if AVAX falls, you get less USD. It's just that simple. Um, so it's, it was an unfortunate set of circumstances that's led to the fall in people's profits because people invested a lot of money. You know, these nodes cost you know, upwards of 20K at one point, and now they cost $10, which is crazy when you think about it. But just as easily has money left, money can come back and Thorfi is setting up for the future for that money to come back and for it to be in a place where it's possible for it to come back and so firstly I want to take a look at what was happening in the node space at the time and the DeFi space at the time and so hopefully I can give you an idea of what was of why the price has declined so much or the token's growth. Also, it claims Nest owners benefit in two ways. First, they would receive token rewards, and second, they'd reap the gains from the token's value appreciation. Turns across multiple chains and allocates rewards to yield holders. The protocol also claims to be user-friendly and says that users are not required to pay any maintenance fees, manage subscriptions, or engage with complex software. The protocol mentions that as part of Chronodes, users join a community of node holders and pool resources to generate high yields. 100% on your money. It has a potential of a 2000% APY over a year's time. That is, it has maintained its price. It boasts a 300% ROI on the tokens. And since the price is pretty stable, that means that you in the past month, I've made $3,474 with crypto nodes. Okay, so what were these claims based off of? 
you're going to get 3,000, 300% on your money. You're going to get insane returns. Price appreciation is going to go through the roof. Well, the reality is they were based on nothing. Um, these claims that people made in the no protocol space about no ago, it was all based on hype and speculation. People were just buying for the sake of buying. There was no proven model here. There was no business generating revenue. You were just robbing Peter to pay Paul. This was just another way to do it. See, cryptocurrency started off, you know, trading. And I think deep down within us, we know trading is immoral. You're just robbing Peter to pay Paul. So when nodes came into the place, into the scene, people saw a way of getting money reliably and consistently without trading, which is both more morally acceptable and easier. And what happened at the time? Well, nodes started to come into the scene around this time, around sort of January 20, you know, around sort of mid 2021, 2022 type space, nodes started entering the scene. And what's happening at this time? The cryptocurrency market went from half a billion, well, half a trillion to three trillion. That's an enormous rise in value, enormous. And where was all that capital going into cryptocurrency? Well, it was going into promising projects and nodes were something that everyone was shilling. Everyone thought was the next biggest thing. Everyone thought was gonna solve everyone's problems and get people to retire early. Well, what really happened? Well, what really happened is all that capital left the markets and we went down to under one trillion at one point. So, I mean, so 66% of the entire cryptocurrency market has gone from the all time high. But that doesn't say the whole story. Like I said before, where is this remaining money gone? Well, this remaining money has gone into stable coins and Bitcoin. So basically all money has left DeFi, all of it, basically. Um, my best estimates, you can only really estimate these things, but 95% has left DeFi. So what happened to projects that started here and were doing well? Well, their money's gone. Then there was nothing you could do about that. So why did this money leave? The money, the reason why the money left is because speculation entered the market and speculation left the market. And that's the biggest reason for Thorfi's loss in price. Now, you may not like to accept that, but that's just reality. You know, an insane amount of money went into the market in an insane bull run, spurred on by global events, and an insane amount of capital left the market. That's the main reason, that's the number one reason for Thorfi's decline in price above everything else. Now, let's get on to Thorfi's second reason for decline in price. AVAX, it's LP pair. And remember, this is what Thor is priced in. Thor isn't priced in dollars. Thor is priced in AVAX. Its trading partner is AVAX. So Thor can only ever be a percentage of AVAX. And what's happened to AVAX's price? Well, it's gone from 122 to currently sitting just above $10. And it did go below $10 at one at certain points on certain charts. And it's stayed this way for a very long time. Yeah, you know, it's, it's dropped down here back in July, it dropped down to 16. Now, that is an insane event. How can a project survive that? Genuinely, seriously. Now, the project could have been the best performing cryptocurrency the world has ever seen. It could have been the best project the world has ever seen. It could be the best business the world has ever seen. What is, it doesn't matter what Thorfi was doing. It's lost 90% of its value just because of AVAX, because Thor is priced in AVAX and AVAX alone. Now, I don't know of any project that could survive that, but Thorfi's here today and Thorfi's built 
changed and adapted. So that's the second reason why Thorfi has declined in price. Now let's get on to the third reason why Thorfi has declined in price. And this is the system itself and the actions taken by the Thorfi team itself. So now when people first purchased a node, which at the time was just a contract position, they were providing very different rewards than they did today. An Odin earned you almost three Thor per day, and this was at a price where Thor token was upwards of $300. So you were making a lot of money off Thor nodes, and people did make a lot of money off Thor nodes. Let me make it clear that this money hasn't magically disappeared. You're looking at your position, and you're looking at your, your money if you're seriously down on Thor, as the money's gone. But the money didn't go. The money went to people. The money went to people who were claiming Thor at this time, rather than compounding and looking to compound. And at the time, the team were encouraging compounding, and we compounded nodes to an insane number, which was no longer sustainable. And so the reward weight had to just keep going down and down and down and down. So you can see here the first reward cut went down to from, you know, I didn't give me three Thor per day basically to one. And this was hard to take for a lot of people um, because they were promised a certain return and some people did buy in at the very high prices and then all of a sudden their rewards were well, now it's longer to get my ROI back. Now it's longer to get your ROI back. And the price just kept declining and that time just kept getting longer and longer and longer and further and further away. But people did make money off this. You know, people made a lot of money off this. So where did, so that money's gone now and people made money. People lost money as well. And what's the logical takeaway from here is you can't really blame people for claiming their allocation and selling but i did drop the price and the price wasn't able to be maintained now people seem to think thor fi was a ponzi scheme and that's a word that's thrown around in the crypto space way too common and way too easy thor fi was never a ponzi scheme let's get into what thor fi was initially when people first brought and when people thought they were going to get these returns consistently forever. So if we go back to Thorfi's original documentation in their medium, what was Thor Financial originally? Well, Thor Financial was never a Ponzi scheme. It was a crypto hedge fund, which was supposed to support the output of the nodes by providing buybacks to the node token, maintaining its price. And eventually start buying back NFT, buying back nodes when they became NFTs and deflating the supply. That was the plan. Now, unfortunately, because of what happened in the cryptocurrency space, and I fell victim to this, and so, far, so did the Thor financial team, ThorFi team, we fell victim to price will rise forever. Price will go up forever. No one expected the price to decline like it did, which made having a hedge fund in crypto literally impossible most passive income projects died and by most i mean the vast majority of passive income projects died but not thorfi thorfi is still here it's one of i think three or four that i know off the top of my head that survived out of thousands that there's a reason for that so So, this is what Thorfi was. It wasn't a Ponzi scheme. And also, this was going to be supported by a game. And that game was called Gods of Asgard. So, what was this game? Well, this was a game that was going to utilize the Thor token. So, the Thor Financial, as it was known at the time, was going to be a crypto hedge fund supported by a game. So this is as far from a Ponzi scheme as you could imagine. It had multi-faceted 
modes of revenue generation. It was going to generate revenue from this game called Gods of Asgard, and it was going to generate revenue from crypto hedge fund operations, and it was going to generate revenue from maintenance fees on nodes. So it, it were going to have multifaceted source of revenue. So how you can possibly call this a Ponzi scheme is beyond me. It wasn't a Ponzi scheme by any stretch of the imagination, but it did rely on a certain characteristic of Ponzi nomics to maintain the price eventually when crypto hedge fund became viable due to market conditions and the consequence of relying on a game called Gods of Asgard. Now, at the time, Gods of Asgard was managed under a different team. Now, what happened with Gods of Asgard? Well, the management team of Gods of Asgard committed a crime and defrauded Thor Financial of $1 million worth of seed money. Now, that was a serious fraud. Um, and Thorfi cannot be blamed for a serious fraud. They paid money for a product that they didn't receive and were scammed out of the money. Now, you can make a blame on Thorfi for this in regards to there was no contractual agreement. And this, I would say, is Thorfi's biggest mistake. Gods of Asgard was meant to be a core staple of the business model. It was meant to support the token price via use in the game, but also provide effectively the marketing for Thor Financial um, in the form of people playing the game and talking about the game. And it was it was a major aspect of Thor Financial and this current investment model. So not having any contractual agreements in place, especially when you're dealing with a million dollars investors money, was appalling a behavior. And I think everyone can admit that. But looking back at that time, the way Gods of Asgard sort of emerged from inside the Thor financial community, but then created its own team, you can kind of understand why a contract wasn't sort of put out initially, because the Gods of Asgard team eventually, first of all, came from within Thorfi, we were in the Thorfi Discord, and you can kind of understand there was a that kind of working relationship, why a contract wasn't drawn up. But it was a mistake, and it has resulted in a loss of confidence that was significant and a loss of $1 million of operational funds and a key aspect of the business. So, at this point, what has happened? Thorfide's nose count going out of control. Gods of Asgard, a key staple of business, has completely collapsed. 95% of all money is left and leave in DeFi and cryptocurrency hedge funds is no longer viable. So what's Thor Financial doing? Thor Financial is still here paying out to investors. Now, I, that is an incredible feat to be in that position where Thorfi is had its business models destroyed, all of them. Cryptocurrency hedge fund, no longer viable. Game, not viable token price um, falling drastically because of hyperinflation of nodes and it's still here working still paying out so what happened from here now this is the most important part and this is why I think Thorfi will be the only one of the few only node models to work and the few passive income projects to work because what Thorfi did here was incredible and it's uh, and a lot of credit is needed to be given to Thor 5 for what they did after this. When resilient communities come together in an open, interoperable world, we can all break boundaries for what's possible. What began with a core group of developers and engineers guided by a shared vision has today become a movement powered by a mission to unleash the future of the blockchain by bringing DeFi to everyone and reimagine the investing experience to be more simple, accessible, rewarding, and fun. We're innovating with intention, kicking open doors to bring DeFi to all. 
in creating the future we want to see. One investment at a time. So where do you stand? With those who follow the status quo? Or with those who defy it? Join us and discover investments that defy. So Thorfo rebranded and it has made a business and that business is building a Web3 gaming subnet which provides gaming services and utilities to people who want to interact with the Thorfi subnet and this provides a constant revenue. Now this constant revenue can be used to pay out the node holders at what is now the VRR rate of Thorfi. So Thorfi has taken the situation, they've realized, okay, we can only pay out so much. How much can we pay out? Well, let's make an algorithm that does it for us, that adjusts on a daily basis, that can pay out as much as it can to investors while still maintaining the business. This gives Thorfi the survivability that it needs to survive not just for a few years, but maybe our lifetimes. You know, we may be dealing with Thorfi here, you know, at least for a good 20, 30 years, because this is a business I can see with a very strong future that's gonna do very, very well for itself. Because there isn't really another option. There's if you want to make a game on in the NFT space, you're gonna need a lot of things and you're going to need you're going to need effectively you're going to need a subnet yourself in some way or form just because of just because of scalability i mean when avax gets to you know a thousand dollar price which it is going to get there eventually you know you can't play a game on you know ethereum you know with the gas fees well avax is, is going to be in that position in the future you know, it's going to get to those prices, so you're going to need scalability, you're going to need subnets. And Thorfi is setting up to be the first gaming subnet where people can make games on its on its on its chain effectively. A subnet is effectively a blockchain. And they can utilize the tools that they've created. Those that being capsule marketplace with game loop technology, which I've never seen anything in DeFi deployed so effectively. And so there was, Game Loop was deployed with virtually no errors. There, there, was, there, was, there was a small delay, but other than the, a small delay, Game Loop was deployed and there was no bugs, fixes. It worked and it was an incredible undertaking. The ability to list and mint and burn and relist other NFTs is, it all happens so seamlessly. It's like a Web2 operation. Game loop happens like a Web2 operation and everything's just easy, simple and done. So this this has great utility for all games um, that want to utilize its chain. It's There's there's a lot of good positive things that Thorfi can offer the gaming community here. and. Thorfi has put itself in a great position here because of the amount of nodes it has. Now, people are going to look at this and think the node inflation, whilst at first this was a bad decision, when you looked at it from that perspective of you're hyper inflating the value of our assets. But realistically, this was the only way it could have worked, ever could have worked in hindsight, now looking back at it. Because if we kept, say, 10,000 nodes, the, the barrier to entry would be so much higher that realistically no one would be doing it and there would be no volume coming into the cap the, the NFT space and no one would be buying um, nodes because no one's going to pay $500 um, for a node after what's all happened with Thorfi. But they will pay $10 for speculation and that's created volume and it's allowed effectively the NFT assets to become 
assets of value and tradable in themselves, um, which is not really something that um, I would have thought of beforehand. I would have, I was thinking nodes increasing their count and just hyperinflating. I just thought that was devaluing. I never took into account that it's creating an asset in itself and that asset is exchangeable and that is value. And now the NFTs have a price and now I can sell my NFTs on the marketplace. Whereas I couldn't really sell them if they were, you know, $500 each because no one would be buying them, but people are buying them for $10. Um, and so overall, I think the, the increase in no count was whilst it's a hard pill to swallow, it was a necessary one to be at the next step to set ourselves up for the ability for this to actually work in the future and actually work in the long term. So five years time, we can be sitting here still talking about our Thorfi income. And so what has been created? Well, the first product's been released and that product is Capsule and Capsule is doing phenomenally well. Let's just have a quick overview of Capsule. So this is the Capsule website, which is Thorfi's very own NFT marketplace. And it's not just Thorfi's NFT collection that's listed here. Um, Thor, this is going to, this is Capsule.gg, it's its own domain. It's its own marketplace that is a Thorfi product that provides revenue to Thorfi. So this is the first business um, model that's been released. And whilst at the minute it only has Thorfi products on it, it's setting up to be able to list other NFTs and for other NFTs to list here and want it to be and wants and it wants to be a primary um, asset management tool for AVAX NFTs. And as we can see looking at Capsule Analytics, which are on the website. Um, you know, they've given analytics, you know, open for people to to view. Now, there was a big rise in volume when um, Game Loop sort of first um, launched in May, and volume has been go um, and that was that's bigger than today. But volume has been going up consistently over time with um, Capsule and other products aren't even listed on here yet and when they are this volume is going to take off um, and that this is and this is um this is all revenue for Thorfi this is a business now Thorfi's officially got a working business and it's in the form of capsule so let's look at game loop stats for what's going on so you can see here um game loop is deflating the node supply so nodes are getting more valuable over time they're being deflated and this is a this is um i want to say it's this is a good thing of course because nodes are getting more valuable and when nodes get more valuable vrr can go up um, and it's being deflated at a rate that the that the investors are doing um, investors are choosing to deflate it there's not a mandatory burn um, the Thorfi team are um, buying nodes off the marketplace and burning them with revenue. But it's the burn's happening at, a, at a, a manual pace where the investors are comfortable with burning. And I, and I really like that because it sort of it, it allows you know the value to be determined rather than manipulated, which is what a, say a, a manual burn of 50% is. It's yeah, okay, you've pumped the value up massively but you've just manipulated the price and now people are just selling. And now because people are just selling, the value is worthless because the value is not being maintained. But this way, the value is being maintained and your assets are now something that is valuable. And as we can see, the perks are getting applied to nodes. Nodes are just getting, nodes are getting better and better and better, but the overall emissions are going down. So the amount of four that needs to be output per day is going down. So that makes the Thor token so more valuable over time. And when products like the subnet are released, this is going to give Thorfi a an opportunity to have a vast number of products 
in a marketplace which is growing because the web free gaming marketplace is growing i think pretty much everyone is in agreement in this whole crypto space that web3 gaming is going to be massive and it's going to affect and i think it's going to be pretty much the only future of defi and i think every single product in defi is going to be either a game directly or a service supporting gaming there's going to be very few little things i think meme coins may even be made illegal i think um you know and it given enough time it's kind of necessary i mean that that kind that if that regulation comes in i kind of would support it you know we can't have you know shiba inu x tokens go in you know ten thousand x in price you know we can't let that continue if this industry wants to actually be respected and established you know and you know we can't let scammers rule it we, we can't and so good solid products with a good solid foundation a good solid business sense are necessary and Thorfi is one of those and it's providing a business to game in um, a pride and service to game in um, which is very profitable and this is the reasons why i'm bullish on Thorfi is everything they've been through they've survived every single problem they face they adapted and overcame every single um bit of fud and hate that went their way they just dealt with and just continued building and and their business sense is enormous you know they were not hesitant to drop the node emissions and introduce the vrr that was a necessary move that needed to be done to sustain the business. Well, that's Thorfi's fiduciary responsibility. It's not to provide you your ROI. It's to provide a, biz a sustainable business that will work in the future. And I can see this working now. This is the first time I'm looking at Thorfi and thinking, I am confident this will be here in five years time. And I am confident I will still be receiving rewards from my nodes in five years time. And I'm confident there will be a lot more than they are today. And that's why I wanted to do this video, because I wanted to sort of not just combat the FUD, because I don't think it's FUD. I think I don't like that term. I think that term's just like this, just like HODL, just like it's another term that's invented effectively by scammers to trick you. There is reason to be fearful of Thorfi. There is reason to have uncertainty and there is reason to have doubt. These are very rational, logical responses, um, but I think they can be addressed. And I think my fear for Thorfi's future is relieved now. The burden of that is relieved. I think I can look at them and go in and say, OK, they know what they're doing. Their team is competent in business. Their team's generating products that are going to create real revenue and real money coming in to pay holders real returns, not just robin peter to pay paul they're an actual business providing actual money to their actual investors and that's the first time i've sort of really seen this in the crypto space um and other than a few products here and there but that this is the one first one that's doing it on a major scale with an expanded inventory and that's alleviate my fear um uncertainty there's always going to be a bit of uncertainty with your investments you know, it would be insane to say you can invest with 100% confidence. But over time, I've noticed my uncertainty going down and down and down and down and down. When the node count was inflating, my uncertainty was high. And I was looking at this going, how can this possibly be sustainable? Then node count came in. And I'm like, okay, that makes things more sustainable. Then the VOR rate came in. And I'm like, okay, now you can actually provide an amount of tokens you're given an, an amount of tokens that you can actually do um okay so now we're in a situation where from here we can go up um whereas before we were only able to go down with without a node cap we were only able to go down in emissions and without a vr rate we were only able to go down in emissions because people are just selling daily and they're entitled to sell daily if they want to and because this is a passive income protocol that they invested in for that purpose so but so my uncertainty over time is decreasing 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 and with the 
efficiency of how game loop launched, my uncertainty dropped even further because now I'm, I have more confidence that Thorfi is capable of releasing significant products um, at you know much more effectively and at a much better and faster rate. And doubt, well, there isn't really much to doubt anymore. And there was stuff to doubt um, back when it was a node model operating on, I'll use Ponzi nomics, but I don't like that term, but operating on Ponzi nomics. Um, now there isn't much in doubt because now it's sort of, it, it's paying what it is paying. Um, and when you sort of accept that, you realize, okay, it's paying what it's paying. Um, and it won't pay more and it won't, and it could pay less, but it could pay less, no, sorry, I rephrase that. It could pay less, but it could pay more. And the way all the metrics are going is that it is going to pay more. No counts are going down. Emissions are going down. This means price is going to go up. So, and, and the other products that have been released as well are, are quite interesting as well. So capsules, so the drop, this for capsules can change. So when there's a bunch of games on the Thorfi marketplace and there's a bunch of NFTs on capsule.gg, well, there's no reason why the Thorfi capsules can't contain the NFTs for the games. So there's there's huge opportunities here for people and there's huge opportunities for, for the gaming space and people who want actual passive income that's actually based off a business that's getting real revenue that is now what Thorfi is. And so I'd like to think people would, you don't have to take my word for it and please do not take my word for it. Um, do not take anyone's word on YouTube, but look into Thorfi again and, or maybe at least keep it on the radar, at least be aware of it and six months time, look back into it and maybe you'll be surprised. And maybe you'll start to realize that Okay, the price did go down, but what really was the fault of this? Whilst some bad decisions were made by the Thorfi team in regards to the treasury management, but I made the same investments, you know, so I can't really blame them for that. Um, for Gods of Asgard not having a contract, yeah, that was a bad decision. That was probably the worst decision. But these changes have shown that they want Thorfi to survive. They want Thorfi to be a thriving business and they want to pay out revenue to holders significantly into the future. And I'm looking at this um, in a way that I'm looking at this being my permanent passive income protocol for life. And I'm, I'm starting to be, I wouldn't say I'm starting to be confident in my investment. I would say I'm happy that I'm investing in Thorfi now. Despite that fact I've lost a lot of money so far, I'm happy that eventually that money will return and eventually I will get my ROI and I'll hopefully be in profit in a reasonable amount of time. And by reasonable, I mean year long period, not you've completely got your money back in two weeks. That's insane. And people need to, um, get their head around, you can't, that can't work. That would be insane. Uh, I know in DeFi we like sort of huge pump and dumps, but the DeFi space is changing and the DeFi space is becoming actual business oriented. And one of the biggest business is, is web free gaming. And this, that's, that's where the money's gonna be in the future. And so Thorfi, I think are hitting the nail on the head. They're doing what's necessary to sustain itself even though it's hard for the investors to take. And they're going into the market where the money is gonna be, and they're providing a useful service for that market. So I'm looking at Thorfi now, when, in, a, in a light of glad and happiness that they've made the right decision um, and they're going in the right direction rather than stress and anxiety with where it was before with a hyperinflating supply. Um, my my opinion one has changed and I now I would say I'm confidently bullish on Thorfi. And I, like I said before, I'll say it again, 
Don't take my word for it. Don't ape into it. Don't YOLO into any investment just because someone's told you. But just keep it in your mind and just just um, keep it on in the back burner. Start looking into yourself. Start reading through the new mediums. Start um, when the new roadmap comes out. Take a look at the new roadmap and because there is a new roadmap coming soon. And just um, just have it in the back of your mind and in a couple of months maybe it can prove itself to you and maybe it can maybe when the subnet drops maybe then start looking at the subnet has a new um, lease of life and a new investment and a and a new um, situation for Thorfight to be in and hopefully this can be one of the gems that recovers from the collapse which was always going to happen and always going to um and people were always going to lose a lot of money investing in no protocols the way they did just because of the hype and speculation and how it didn't deserve the money it got at the time but now it does um for if i have earned respect now and i'm very very pleased about that because i'm looking at my situation now thinking maybe i can recover my investment here and um thank you for watching my video and I hope you consider Thorfine in the future. So thank you very much. Take care.